What's up, Asphalt Lifers? Good morning to our listening audience. I'm so glad that you guys are joining us by this special exclusive edition of the Asphalt Life podcast, or excuse me, the webinar. We're on webinars today. <laughs> so wanted to um, welcome all of you all that are here. And obviously we have some special guests with us. Um, wanted to say good morning to Mike and Michael Holmes who are on. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, the sun's nice. It's one of those days for roofing. It's yeah. nice here, too. I'm in Atlanta. And good morning, Stan. Um, I know you good are. Good morning. Are you in Texas or? I'm traveling, traveling uh, in uh, Kentucky today, actually. Okay. So uh, cruising around. And you're right. It is roofing season. The sun is out. So anybody that's actually watching this live, you are really committed. We're happy you guys are here, but we're, we know we'll get a lot of people watching this after the fact. So good morning, Mike. Michael, how are you guys doing? We are doing very well. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing excellent. I mean, like, like you said, the sun's shining. It's a beautiful day. We're happy to talk to all of you. So couldn't be any better. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're listening on, um, be sure to turn up your volume so that you can hear us. If you are um, on an iPad, you have the ability to communicate with us during the podcast by uh, using your chat bar. So feel free to pop something in there to say good morning to Mike and Michael and Stan and myself. Let us know where you're listening from. We love to have engagement during these webinars as always. So definitely want to get your engagement during this one as well. Um, and I see people already putting a lot of questions and comments in, letting us know that you're here. Good morning, Teresa from Wisconsin and Florian. Um, the Atlas crew is live and well. Um, so glad to see you guys are on. Kathleen, all the way from Maine. Good morning. Glad that you all are on. Yeah, so if you're on here, go ahead and pop something in the chat. Let us know that you can hear us and that you are on. We're going to be getting started in just a moment. So glad you guys have joined us for today's webinar. Hey, Felipe, good morning. Liz Lay, Brandon Galaka, Alicia Scott, Peyton Face, Felipe Castro, good morning. <clears throat> and we still have a couple more people in the queue waiting to jump on, so we're going to give them a chance. Don't want the, anyone to miss uh, really good information that we're going to be talking about today about um, five secrets to really winning with your homeowner. And I know Mike and Michael, you guys are experts in this category. And so we're really looking forward to getting a lot of really great information on those tips of building the homeowner brand and building homeowner trust and just how important that is. And then obviously in this business, referrals are a big deal for our contractor audience. And so you start a referral by making an impact and making a lasting one. So excited to hear all the great tips you guys have for us today. Well, I know Mr. Holmes is going to be giving all kinds of tips. And yeah, we've got lots of tips to get. We've put in uh, you know, some of our secrets, some things, a lot of things we wanna share with all of you. Uh, we think is important especially when dealing with homeowners. Great. Great. All right. Well, should we kick it off with the uh, agenda and uh, get Let's this thing started? It. I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. So today um, we're going to uh, meet Mike and Michael. Stan's going to do a little introduction for each of them. And then we're going to jump into the secrets for winning with your homeowner. Knowing your why, what are, you know, the details in the contracts, talk about a little bit about pricing. And then, you know, obviously every homeowner wants a freebie. So we'll talk a little bit about having that balance between free and cheap, right? Um, then we'll go into the home tips for building a memorable brand and um, some QA that you all have sent in um, to go into some questions that you guys have for, for our listening from our from our listening audience. So excited for all of that. So Stan, do you want to talk a little bit about Mike? Yeah. 
Yeah, really excited to uh, be partnering with the Holmes Group, Mike uh, Holmes uh, and uh, Michael Holmes and Sherry. Uh, and uh, I understand Sherry uh, has a new addition to the family. So congratulations on that, guys. Grandpa and uh, Uncle Michael over here. So uh, how's the new baby doing, guys? Well, she's, what, two and a half months old now. Uh, her she's... name is Callie. She is cute. She reminds me totally of Sherry. Yeah. When she was a baby, lots of attitude, uh, like <laughs> Sherry when she was a baby, but she is so, so cute. That's great. Well, with uh, with you guys, it really is a family affair. and We love following you guys and watching your shows and uh, the interaction between you guys. And uh, for those of you that are uh, just getting introduced to Mike Holmes and his brand, Mike Holmes is a professional contractor, television host, uh, public speaker, educator. Uh, uh, really, you know, one of the most well-known uh, personalities in North America and one of the most trusted contractors, gained trust of the homeowners and respect of the industry worldwide. And he's built an incredible brand with not only his homes brand, but really encompassed with this make it right uh, philosophy. And uh, Mike, I guess just to kind of take it from there, you know, make it right. You had mentioned in a, in a recent video, I saw that it was really born from working with your dad in the trades. And now your kids are involved. Give me a sense of, you know, what it was like working with your father and what he taught you about making it right. Well, you know, my dad was a jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, he actually worked at General Motors, but because he had that desire to fix the house and, and you know, as a little boy growing up, he was a licensed plumber. He did have his license. But he touched everything. I mean, he did drywall, studying, electrical, uh, roofs. We did everything. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't have Nintendo and PlayStation like my son did. He was a professional. <laughs> uh, I was more interested in taking his screws and nails and wood and actually working with him. Now, one thing he always said to me is, Mike, if you're going to do something, do it right the first time. Uh, I didn't know. I thought he was Superman, to be honest with you. I thought he knew everything, but he didn't. Uh, but what he did teach me was about doing things right, about caring what you do. And if you don't know, find out how to do it. I guess over the years, this grew into the family business that we have and trying to teach my kids the same manners that uh, if you take care of people, if you know what you're doing, you're going to actually make it right. Make it right stands for a few things. If you do something wrong, make it right. It's not just about construction, it's about life in general to me. But for me personally, in this business, I saw way too many things that didn't work. I saw way too many things over the years that were done wrong. And I kept saying, why is this happening? What, what are we doing about this? And it, you know, accidentally bumped into a television show an opportunity about 18 years ago. And here we are today. Uh, the most important thing here is being honest and uh, true to who you are. That's what I think. Yeah, that's great. Well, we're so happy to be partnered with you and really appreciative of you taking the time today. Uh, so uh, with that, let's go ahead and introduce our second guest, uh, your son, Michael Holmes. So, Michael, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. It's good to be here. So Michael Holmes uh, is a professional contractor, television host, public speaker, and uh, I think recently an expert uh, bottle cap kicker. Is that what I see? Like you guys, you're per perfecting that as a new trade, right? That's right. Yeah. And if anyone has seen that video, you know it was one and done, one try. That's it. <laughs> well, this guy's a great Twitter follow, so definitely follow him. He's always posting fun stuff from uh, everything he's doing. Uh, so uh, he, along with his dad and Sherry, Holmes, his sister, uh, are uh, on the Holmes, uh, Holmes and Holmes uh, television show, uh, to which we're really excited to, uh, uh, you know, be watching this coming season. Uh, so, Mike, uh, Michael, how big of an influence was your dad when it came to joining the trades? You know, was it something you always knew you wanted to get into or not really? Well, it's funny because, he, first of all, he was a huge influence. Uh, second of all, no, it wasn't something I wanted to get into. Uh, when I was younger, I wanted to be a firefighter. It was something after... After 9-11, okay. I saw these firefighters you know, throwing their lives on the line, saving people's lives. And I thought, you know, I want to make a difference in this world. I always wanted to be a superhero. That hasn't panned out yet. Mm -hmm. Still still hoping for that. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah, I do. We, we can't tell everyone about that because it's like my undercover thing. Uh, so <laughs> really, he said to me one summer, he said, Mike, how about you come work for me? I'll pay you good money and you'll work hard. 
and I worked really hard. I'll tell you that. The, he's, he's not admitting to the good money, though. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> At the time, it was, uh, listen, I was, I was a kid working for my dad, but what I realized was that I loved working with my hands. And maybe even more than that, I loved helping people. And that was something that I realized that we can do in this industry. And it made me really, you know, kind of feel like a superhero as a teenager. I remember our first reveal, uh, we did 52 fences, I think, 52 fences in a subdivision. And I remember all the families came together and, and you think like fences, maybe they're not that important, but all these families were so thankful and saying, you know, you changed your lives. We, we were screwed. The contractor took our money. We didn't have the money to do these fences. And something little like that, I was like, wow, we made a difference in these people's lives just by making it right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, uh, you know, uh, there's something to be learned there for people thinking about getting in this trade or evaluating whether they're in the right business, you know, being in the trade that this is a great business to be in. Not only uh, is it something you can feel good about, you know, working with your hands, a lot of times working outside, but also the fact that um, you are bringing a, an incredible value to people when you make it right, because you're remaking one of the most important things we'll ever own, which is our home, right? So why is it important for you, Michael, to really help that next generation of uh, tradespeople sort of get into this business and make it right as well, getting that next crop of people into the, into this industry? Sorry, did you say Mike or Michael? Michael. Excuse Michael, you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, it's really important because we have a big shortage in skilled tradespeople. Uh, women yeah. for 4.5% of skilled trades people in, in Canada. So we want to promote more women in the skilled trade. One more, we want to promote more uh, of the next generation of skilled trades because I think we see a lot of people that, uh, you know, haven't done, maybe haven't done the job right. There's a, like my dad always says, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. The, the people, the good, who know enough and they, they do their best to, to help someone. The bad, they care. They care. The bad, they don't know enough, but they try. And the ugly, they don't know and they don't care. We want to eliminate that from the industry by, by getting more good people in there, by working with organizations like Skills Canada, World Skills, Skills USA. Uh, we, we promote the next generation of skilled trades. And I mean, this is like the Olympics of skilled trades. My dad for years would say to me, you got to come check this out. Like, you got to see this. These, they, You're talking world skills. World skills. But uh, these, these kids are better than some of the people that have been in this industry. And that's not a slight against the veterans in the industry, but seeing how skilled these kids are, it really, uh, it really, really gives you hope for the next generation in skilled trades, hoping that they will continue to build better. They will continue to do right by the workers. Well, you know what? It's, yeah. it, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, getting into the trades is not an, a nine to five job. It's not an office job. It's, it's, it's satisfaction in so many different levels of, of work. You're never gonna be out of business. One thing that's happening every single day is more people on the planet, more houses being built, all the old houses gotta be fixed, roofs galore. It's like a haircut. Right? Yeah. And that's trades too. Yeah. A haircut, I mean, <laughs> we're gonna be out of the business because we have more and more hair to cut. So opportunity is massive in comparison to most job choices. Yeah. Firefighter, that's a good choice. But opportunity to get in is much harder than it's true. doing a contract. It's true. I, I remember talking right. to one of my friends who was a fire chief at the time. And he said, honestly, you'd have a really hard time getting in right now. And and it wasn't that it was like construction was my, my second choice. Is that I just didn't didn't really know that was an option for me until I tried it. So I always tell the next generation, try it, whether that's for a summer, whether that's through uh, world skills, skills Canada, skills USA. Go out, try a trade. See if you like it. See if it's for you. Because sitting in an office, being a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it is, we need those. But it's not for everyone. So knowing what you want to do, that will help you excel. Because if you're passionate about what you do, you're going to be good at it. Yeah. Yeah, and we see a big push with that in the roofing industry as well, particularly with the National Roofing Contractors Association pushing a pro certification program, which is a fantastic program. And again, for all those business owners or sales managers or operations managers that are going to watch this webinar, uh, look at how you can invest in training people and getting new people in, because I think people will be more attracted to your business and your industry, this industry, if you offer training and give them a path up, because I think that's what people want is they want to feel like they're being invested in.
So with that, let's kind of transition over uh, real quick and then get into the meat of the content. Uh, sounds like some new things happening with uh, the Holmes brand this, uh, this year. Homes and Homes Season 3 will be airing on DIY Network in September this year. Is that right, guys? You got it. Man, we are filming like crazy. We haven't stopped filming. 18 years, 12 months of the year. Yeah, this poor guy needs a break. <laughs> hey, we, we help him. He needs some help. He needs some time on his boat. But we are we're back at it helping families again. And it's been really good because I think what we've done with season three is revamp Homes on Homes. Homes makes it right. And now with the family, my family helping other families, uh, it's really showcasing my son, my daughter, uh, the people, the stories, the why. I think this is probably going to be one of the best seasons yet that everyone is going to love this. We help five families in 12 episodes and we're running back and forth from job to job. And it's about when Sherry gets married, she has a baby. Mm. You know, it's, it's about our lives. It's, it's, it's about helping other people. And the reveals, which we call at the end of the show, are fabulous. People yeah. are just, you know, and, and Mike and Sherry, they're feeling good about doing this. It makes me feel good. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, we can't wait to tune in and see uh, what you guys have in store for us this coming season. Uh, but with that, let's go ahead and jump into the meat of our webinar today, uh, which is five secrets to winning with your homeowner. So we'll kind of turn it over to you guys and look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Well, I've always said a good contractor does exactly what they say they're going to do. My dad always said to me, the one thing that, that sticks with you in your life is your word. If you say you're going to show up at 8 o'clock in the morning to meet them to look at the roof, I don't care if it's snowing, hail, sleet, you better be there at 5 minutes to 8. Doing exactly what you say you're going to do is about everything a homeowner needs. They always remember the bad taste in their mouth, but that taste, the first thing is, hey, he did what he said he was going to do. He showed up. What else? What else? Uh, well, I think explaining the why. Uh, the why is so important. My dad always said, it's not about how you do it, it's about why you do it. So for instance, uh, materials. A lot of people say, well, they have a hard time selling products or materials to homeowners because they're more expensive. As a contractor, it is our job to explain why these materials are important in their home, uh, whether that's roofing materials, whether that's uh, an uncoupling membrane. There, there are so many things that are important to the home that homeowners don't know about, and as contractors, we need to teach them about that. So like upselling, uh, that's a good point. Yeah. A lot of uh, roofers, contractors, period, out there seem to have a problem with upselling the client to a better product. When it comes to roofing, if you try and upsell a homeowner to what is necessary, if they don't have the money, what is necessary? I would say, okay, if you got standard shingles, use standard shingles. Well, what should we have under the standard shingles? Yeah, ice and water shield. A whole roof membrane. Make it watertight. If you were to explain to a homeowner, that with just a membrane that we put up over your roof, not only do my guys not slip or fall off the roof because it's non-slip, but it will protect your roof without shingles. That's the first line of defense. Now let's get into the shingles. And what do you want? Try not to sell too many people on looks, but on product itself. Because once we teach people why we should be using this product, the how becomes easy. Yeah, mm -hmm. well said. And then walking your homeowner through the contract and making sure they understand. The way I think, as a contractor and, and your homeowner, it's like a relationship, whether that's uh, you know at home, your relationship, think anything in life, it's a, you have to work together and put work into that relationship. So as a contractor, you have to be available to the homeowner when they don't understand something, when, when they're having questions about their contract. I call it the dating game. You're getting to know each other. And that's the first line of defense meeting homeowners is that, hi, I'm Mike, what's your name? And once you get to know each other, this is where the relationship grows into where it's supposed to be. Doesn't mean you're gonna end up dating them. But however, it's you are gonna, be, hey, some, some, some clients I don't wanna work for because I got a bad feeling about them. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm gonna say no, but I may up the price to hopefully scare them away. And, and also documenting everything you do. And that's also, unfortunately, the old school way, and I think this is partly how you were raised, everything was done on a handshake. Things have changed, and, and throughout the time, 
things have changed that now it's important to document everything. That means having a contract. That means having emails that trace back so that you're not held liable or, or you know, they say something that actually isn't true and can hold against you. If it goes bad. We, yeah. that's, that's rare. We don't yeah. want that to happen. That's but to protect right. you, to yeah. protect the homeowner. By breaking down everything, including the price and the job, we'll explain to them, okay, here's the membrane on the roof. Here's the price for that. Here's the valleys that we recommend. Here's the shingles that we recommend. And that upselling is always start high and work your way down. I always ask my clients, what's your budget? Let's be honest. I mean, I'm going to work with you. How much do you have to work with? And I'll tell you what I can give you. If they don't want to play it that way, I don't mind saying, okay, here's my bare minimum on what I recommend and how can we make it even better from there? And I think that's really important too, is knowing your bare minimum, not going, but like for us, when we install tile, we're not going to install tile on floor sheathing. We're going to use an uncoupling member. We're going to use Dietra. When we install a roof, we're going to make sure there's a member underneath the shingles protecting that roof. Always. There's, there is a bare minimum that for us, our standards have to live with. So know your bare minimum. And again, helping break down the price for that homeowner so that they understand why your bare minimum is what it is. Here's an example. Our window guy, Dominic, we love him. He's uh, probably the best I've ever seen. Yeah. He will fix 10 years ago. Anything, anybody that calls, he will go back and fix it. That's part of the make it right theory. Always, always go back and do what's necessary to make people happy. Now, Dominic, his minimum on his windows, he has the low E on the glass. This is not an upgrade. He doesn't want to upsell it. That's his bare minimum. And I would recommend to everyone out there that your bare minimum is having a membrane under the shingles. That's a no brainer. It's the way to start it. This is the way we do it. And you'll find that when other roofers that are not in this world talk to homeowners and say, oh, no, no, we only have to do the bottom three feet for ice damming. Now, I'm sorry, that's not the way to do this. We want that first layer of protection so that if anything ever happened, high winds, et cetera, and it does blow shingles off the roof, you've done what you said you were going to do. That's, that's a great point. And also, just for anyone tuning in, if you are from the southern states, we're from Canada. We get a lot of snow, so ice and water, <laughs> where we're from. Yeah, certainly. But I think the point is really is really good because I think that is a thing that a lot of contractors are sort of focused on, what the market price is and what you know what they're competing with as opposed to having their bare minimum standard. So I think the point is relevant across any area. You know, it's knowing what you're willing to live with and stand behind at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and another thing is, is picking your battles with, with homeowners. I remember this, this was, uh, this was homes on homes. This was like years ago. I mean, he's been doing this for 18 years. I can't, I've been with them for a while. Not television. Yeah. Television. He's been doing long, but con anyway, we had a homeowner and they wanted free this, free that. We went in there, we did all new HVAC for them. We fixed the mechanical, which was the issue in their home. Mind you, they're, we want new crown molding, we want new this, we want new that, and we don't want to pay for any of it. This homeowner we knew was a bit of a, a nightmare client. So we did what we had to do, but knowing where to bend, we had to stick to our line, which was here, we are fixing this, we have it under contract that this is what we're doing, and we're not going to go further than that because. Let's be honest, every, well, not every homeowner, but a lot of clients want freebies. Every client wants freebies. And it's not a bad thing. It's just a natural thing. But I, I believe if you're professional from the start, here's my examples. Not only do what you say you're going to do. Start when you say you're going to start it. Never charge more money to a homeowner that they did not ask for an extra. Don't do that. Keep the site clean. Be professional. Look professional. Don't smoke on the job site if you smoke. Like all the little things you can do is about how would you want to be treated yourself? Yeah. You want to be treated perfectly by anyone, mechanic fixing your car, et cetera, or a plumber coming in because you're a roofer. You expect the same things that homeowners do because you are now a homeowner. Give them what they want and be professional about it. The little things of freebies is, okay, always strip the roof. I don't care what anyone says, please, never, never. Always convince homeowners you have to strip the roof so we can look at the sheathing, we can look to see if there's problems. We want that membrane on the roof. 
But this is the little things that you show by telling homeowners, this is the way we work. If right. you want to keep cheap, there is another company around the corner. Yeah, and I mean, you don't want to, as a contract, we know it's not always that the lowest price is going to be the worst, but I mean, it usually is. It usually is, and we try and educate homeowners on that too. But for the freebie part, I think it's important to pick your battles. Uh, don't you don't always have to give freebies, but knowing that word of mouth is a powerful tool. They're going to tell their friends. So little things like maybe paint touch-ups, maybe caulking on the inside, or for roofing, maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe you uh, throw underlayment in there, or I don't know. I'm not a roofer. You guys have to decide what's important for you. But for our brand, I know. In certain areas, we try and go above and beyond, and I know the homeowners are really happy with that. Yeah, yeah we, have, we yeah. definitely have quite a few contractors who say, hey, we value our system, right? So we're going to go to market with the system every time, and, even, and that's our base price. So it goes back to what you're saying, which is you know, know your standards and really know, you know the quality that you're putting behind. We've seen homeowners come behind them and say, hey, these guys are not the cheapest but they are very quality and I love my new route. So it stands behind. Well, all of so them. yeah. And Paul Mainville made a comment uh, here uh, in the thread here, the building codes and manufacturing warranty, a lot of dict a lot of times are the ones that dictate the specs on the roof, which is very true. The, but there is, you know, there's a lot of contractors out there cutting corners and you guys see that all the time. I see the pictures that you guys post just because building code and manufacturing warranty says something doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's doing that. And that goes back to your comment about the contract guys is spelling out everything that you're going to do. And right. yes, you know, with up, with upgrades, you know, certainly throwing things in, but you guys see a lot of horror stories in terms of people that didn't do things per manufacturing spec or building codes. Right. Well, I think that um, to most contractors, homeowners, want the cheapest and that's not true the real truth is homeowners want it done right and once right. Edu are willing to pay that price right. the highest price doesn't work the lowest price doesn't work it's usually somewhere in the middle but being honest with them and telling them exactly what you're going to do and showing them here's how much for the underlayment here's how much for the valley here's how much for the roof fence the roof fence that we actually recommend not the cheap ones Where's the number one leakage point? That's all the flashing around the chimney, the skylights. Right. So we want to upgrade that with a proper membrane package around each skylight. So this is something that the more we show the homeowners, the more they feel good about spending the money in your direction. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So next we have a poll. Um, so have you shared new products with homeowners that they then decide to purchase. So um, we're going to launch this poll now. And we want your feedback. Go ahead and populate um, yes, no, or I actually let the homeowner pick the shingles. Have you shared a new product perhaps with a homeowner and then they dictated, decided to purchase it? Must be interesting. Mm -hmm. Getting a lot of yeses popping in there. And, you know, yeah. you guys, while we're waiting for the responses in here, Mike and Michael, you guys have talked about, you know, uh, offering upgrades, you know, but I think it's also really important to make sure that those upgrades are right for that homeowner. But we also remind contractors that they'll never sell something if they don't present it. And a lot of times presenting better quality products is something that contractors are afraid to do because they're afraid of the, they're afraid of their own price. But I think it's important to know you can always, you know, offer sort of a base standard package that meets your criteria, but you'll never sell something better if you don't even present it. So, you know, we really try to encourage people to just show things and not assume that people won't be willing to spend more on a better quality system or better quality package. Well, one thing's for sure. Uh, you have a starting point of your minimum package and that's who you are. Right. Uh, the new products is essential because I mean, everyone's savvy nowadays, they're going on the internet, they're checking out, they're trying to educate themselves on what they should be doing before they call you. That's the majority. Yeah, and I know when, when I was down in Louisiana, when we had the street free shingles, I, I know the homeowner was so concerned about the streaks on their roof. And right. they actually wanted to replace the roof because of those streaks. So by having uh, the right. LG, uh, 
uh, resistant shingles, like I think is, is so important uh, and giving them options again. And here's why, because there are people out there that do care about the aesthetics on their roof. Right. Yeah. Showing things that matter and are actually going to provide a benefit to the homeowner is important and knowing how to translate a feature and a benefit to something that really does have real value for the homeowner. Cause that's the only reason it makes sense to show a product is if it's got real value for the homeowner. When you explain to people that it's the best product and why it takes the highest wins, it takes the, what mother nature can throw at it and it looks damn good. So I always said, if you can't afford it now, wait. However, if your roof needs to be replaced today, that means you waited too long. And again, this is about education with people. Well, and it's important giving them options like the Atlas shingle. I mean, giving a homeowner different selections, explaining to them, explaining to them why this one will work better than that one. And, and in different areas, certain shingles will work better. Again, we're in the north here, so we have a little bit of a different climate. But they still have highways. Oh, totally, have totally, totally. So how big of a factor does yeah. price play in material selection? We're doing another poll. Let's see what you got. All right, we got answers coming in already. We've already kind of touched on this, but you know, obviously price is a big factor out there, but how big of a factor does it actually play on what type of materials you as a contractor select? And this will be interesting to see what, what the guys come back with. Yeah, this is gonna be an interesting yeah, not, so Yeah, we always uh, make a lot of assumptions about this. Yeah, 60% of you all said that partial it only plays a partial part in actually the materials that you select so you really stand behind and believe in the materials that you promote and go after yeah one one an interesting thing you know as you you know you guys have a partnership with 3m you know the 3m every year sends out a survey to people who recently bought a roof so these are people that just bought a roof within the last 12 months and 86% of consumers that they poll say price was not the most important uh, factor. Well, you know, for a very small percentage it is, but to me that is really indicative of what we've got to get out of that mindset that price is really what consumers care about. And it's backed up with some pretty good poll results that 3M does every year. It's about knowledge. And people will pay, I mean, look at you can compare it to a car. They're going to buy the cheapest car in the market. Odds are no. They're going to they're going to make sure they buy a car that's safe for their family, their kids, something that's going to last the whole time. It's the same methodical theory when it comes to your roof. I think the more we tell people, look, if you want to protect your home, start from the outside. Put your money on the outside of the house. You will protect the inside. This is more of the beginning of teaching them what products they should be using and based on their style of life their style of shingles how you can upgrade and then like i said it's 90 percent of all people out there as far as i'm concerned you just said 86 percent want it done right they want the best product they want the best installation it's your job to show them that you are the man and or woman and you are the person that believes backs all these products and for why again as a contractor it is your job to educate the homeowner yeah now being transparent I, I think here's another very very important tool something we do and we show on all of our shows is a shock and awe we bring the homeowners through the house after we demo we show them okay here are the problems in your house this is what we found this is what we're going to do to fix it again that transparency of what products are we going to use uh here are the problems in your house if if there is maybe okay we found something worse and this is what we're gonna have to do to fix it having that uh, honest and open relationship with the the client is very important now sometimes and most times you're not going to be able to get the clients to go on the roof we take pictures we document everything we do and hand that package to every single homeowner so it's not just taking pictures here's what's wrong here's what we need to do by the end of it you give them that package complete pictures before, during, and after. And once you hand it to them, what contractor does that? That's another plus for you under your belt. And the homeowner feels pretty damn good that there's maybe a freebie. They went all this way and gave us a package to show what product they use, how long is it warrantied for, what they put under it, and pictures to prove it. Yeah. Resale value becomes big. And any documentation you might have. And I mean, 
Now it's easy to take pictures. We have this on us at all times. It's not like back in the day, you got to bring your camera up and you have a camera in your pockets. Everyone did. Right. Yeah. I love whenever I'm with contractors, they say, hey, let me show you a picture of the recent job that I, I've done. And they scroll in through the hundreds and hundreds yeah. of pictures. But that is really a part of this. It's used for selling. It's used for documentation, uh, you know, post job, but also it's used in case there are issues. So you can sort of also protect yourself. So there's a lot of re reasons that documentation is incredibly important. So we got another poll, Tiara. Yeah. So this one is, do you find new technologies like apps, your phone, taking pictures, helpful in educating your homeowner about roofing options? So, Paul, uh, Stan, you just mentioned it. You know, a lot of contractors pull out their phone and have tons and tons of pictures on your phone. But, you know, uh, it didn't take long for our readership or our listeners to fill this one in. A hundred percent of them said, guys, that um, yes. It's definitely helpful to have technology and use those that technology when selling to a homeowner. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Which makes lots of sense, right? You pull that phone out. Don't be afraid to take photos of your jobs. Show them before and afters. Do use the shock and all. Yeah. Um, technology. Right there on your phone. It plays such a huge role in. Uh, products in, in educating yourself and the homeowners educating themselves as well in new technologies, new materials. So it, it's extremely important. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where our, our industry is becoming tons of fun and really innovative because I think we were a little laggard for a while and now there's an incredible new technology companies uh, helping contractors, you know, do those really important things better, managing their jobs, managing documentation. Yeah. Uh, managing quoting, you know, uh, visualization, all sorts of incredible things out there. For sure. Yeah. Um, something that we, we find really important is having a memorable brand. And I think the key to doing that is to being you, to being authentic. I mean, I know my dad's brand, he's built that. It's such a strong brand. And then I look at my brand and I think, okay, he's named me Mike Holmes Jr. So if I, if my brand was the exact same as his, <clears throat> pardon me, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the same. So. Well, I could be Pete, and you could be Pete, and he'd be repeat. Yeah, exactly. So being himself is everything, and that's yeah. exactly what he's saying. He yeah. is himself. He's funny on stage, man. I'm, I don't think I'm a funny guy. Yeah, you're pretty funny. He's funny, but I mean, doing uh, working within your community, doing what feels good to you, and being authentic to yourself, I think is so important to your brand because people see through when someone's being fake. So. Yeah. Stick to what you care about and, and uh -huh. really handle it and be passionate about it. Yeah. So, Michael, you were talking right. about the power of a memorable brand. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's something for me, um, like I really care about, you know, a healthy home. I care about a, a lot, woodworking is a passion of mine as well. And that's something I try and try to incorporate in a lot of jobs that we do uh, to really establish my brand and, and who I am as well. But, you know, healthy homes, whether that's, it, it starts, you know, from your, your roofing shingle all to the air you're breathing inside, the materials you use. So sticking again to what is true to you is extremely important when, when building a memorable brand. I always look for the win, win, win. The environment, healthy, the product, the lifespan. When you can put that all together and teach people that we need to think of all of these things, you're your own brand. You, no matter what, never compromise. I saw that earlier. Never compromise. Yes. This is how we do it. We do it right the first time and we guarantee it. If you want it done cheap, like I said, there's another guy around the corner, but I don't recommend that. Yeah, I always say if you think it's expensive hiring a professional, wait until you hire someone pretending to be one. Because then you're going to have to hire a professional to do it right, which will cost you more. Yeah, but uh, and aligning right. yourself with uh, reputable brands. I mean, that, that speaks volumes for your brand. So again, 3M, Atlas the way we work with each other. It, it builds credibility with uh, our brand and others. And that creates synergy. And yes. that synergy is everything we believe in. All the Homes Approved partners, Homes Approved products, working together to make it right. So it's not just us, it's everyone around us. For yeah. sure. And Getting yeah. everybody within your organization buying into that brand, you know, is, uh, is what feeds it. Yep. Yep. Yes. 
Yeah, so I think we have time for one more poll and then we'll get into some of our contractors questions for you, Mike and Michael. Um, but the last poll is, what are the leading deciding factors for um, you when you're deciding um, on products for your homeowners? A lot of options here. Options so are good. Say, yeah, like what does the look and feel matter most? The warranty, overall product features? Um, the brand name that matters to a lot of homeowners or all of these do all of these pay a part in your deciding factor of what you go to market with um, with your homeowners so we got lots of answers coming in here all of the above, all of the above. Yep, yeah that's right so it all matters different things are going to matter to different people I think is, is, is which is why you got to talk about all those things for sure. It's not the big thing, but it's the foolish point that I talk about that most people tend to want. I love the look of this, but if they don't understand that product may not be good, you might as well compare it to a cake. That icing on the cake looks really good. And it's, you put strawberries on it and everything else, but that cake may taste like crap. So <laughs> it isn't about aesthetics. However, it is about all of the above. Yes, yeah, build what's on the inside and not, not necessarily, uh, but anyway we've had an argument about your cake you needed to for, yeah. for i don't know months now because oh, yeah. my son didn't understand i don't get that have your cake you needed too what's the point in having cake if you can't eat it that means you don't have your cake <laughs> you finally got it. <laughs> you guys have a lot of fun together i love that work work play live roof and play together i love that we sure so, do um, we're we're really excited um i know to come and see you guys in toronto uh, as part of our year-long sweepstakes that we're going to be doing um with the roof it right challenge yeah it's always exciting yeah we're excited for uh yeah. you're going to enter to win a trip to come meet the homes group and we're excited for whoever wins it for you to come down to toronto and meet us and you can work with us if you yeah. want <laughs> yeah there you go we're going to never go go back, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. we've got uh, five, five contractors along with a guest are uh, going to be uh, selected at the end of the sweepstakes at random. So lots of ways to enter this contest and or the sweepstakes, I should say. And uh, really excited to bring five contractors uh, up to meet with you, learn from you guys, hear from you directly about how you guys make it right and what you do. See what uh, uh, a big brand like the Homes Group. Uh, does to operate what television looks like and actually they're going to get to film a uh, little mini uh, commercial with you guys is that right yeah we're going to film a little something special with you guys i like that maybe you can even come great. on with this and see what it's like to film the show that's, that's great. great that's fantastic well we'll look forward to that uh, so tiara it looks like we got about maybe 10 minutes left 10 15 minutes so why don't we go ahead and go to some of the uh, user submitted questions that we had and uh, get you guys to chime in on some of the the questions that came from uh, some of our attendees. Awesome. So uh, I'll kick, yeah, I'll kick our first one off here is from Corey Smith, uh, Shingles Roofing out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, how do you make price conscious customers see that there's no value in using the cheapest bidder because of poor quality? And I think we talked a lot about this, but I think it's again, it's something that's on a lot of people's minds. Uh, M&R Home Improvement, Michael Hall said something very similar. How do you explain to the homeowner that the cheapest price isn't the best. So there's a theme there with those ones. And I know something you guys are very passionate about. Well, it's, it's really simple. Again, uh, you, you've heard me say this. If you want to protect the inside of your house, put your money on the outside first. This is the most important thing. By using the cheapest product, the cheapest contractor, odds are significantly you're going to have a problem. Only so many corners can be cut in doing a roof doing a kitchen, doing a bathroom. And what corners can be cut, Mike? The finishing. I, I would say, well, the important in, ones. In product. In product, yeah. Like, you can go with a lower quality finish, but you don't want to sacrifice on what's on the outside, protecting your finishes. Right. And if it's that cheap, you're better to give it to the person that really wants to hand it for that price. Odds are they're never going to get it done. I've, I've been doing this for years, and ever since I was a kid, the cheapest quote always called me back and said, can you come fix this, please? I should have hired you mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, yeah. you know, documentation is also really important. You know, if, if you're, let's say you do a roof and you repair a roof and, and someone's used cheap material, 
by taking pictures of that and showing the homeowner, this is what you get uh, out of X amount of years from using a cheap material. So again, this day and age, the, the technology is really important when, uh, when trying to get yeah. a job. And you gotta ask, yeah, and you, you guys talk. Why the hell would you put little money on your roof to protect your house? That doesn't make any sense to me. Keeps the weather out. Yeah, and you guys talk a lot about referrals, Mike. I know you say, hey, you know, don't just hand a couple of referrals over. Hand as many referrals as you can over. That's also part of the price discussion, wouldn't you say? Well, it shows also that you're professional. The majority of contractors out there, I don't care what they do usually don't hand in referrals they that the, the homeowner usually has to ask for it and if they do they tend to hand in three hand them a hundred give them a hundred and tell them phone every single one of them go see the work and you'll see we're good at what we do mm -hmm. yeah right yeah, that, that yeah. overwhelm them with it almost <laughs> yeah well um guys jace um from hinkle roofing had a, a really good question and we talked a little bit about products and there's always that ebb and flow between a roofing contractor you know making their overhead and sticking to quality products and so he says you know and, and perhaps is do you suggest using ice and water shield over the whole roof just the valleys or does it depend i have a minimum much like my window guy using low e we will always always put a membrane over the entire roof we will never not do it. This protects all workers on the job site from not slipping. It also protects the homeowners. That's the freebie you can give them if you choose to. Um, I mean, there's a lot of products that we can use. Don't use the cheapest, don't just use tar paper, but make sure you cover the entire roof. Homeowners wanna see that you actually want to take care of them. And once you convince them it's the way to do it, they're gonna tell everyone about you and that you are the guys they should be hiring. Yeah, there's certainly different materials we use, uh, whether for the underlayment, ice and water, definitely at least on the first three feet, and then whether we use uh, a blue skin membrane, whether we use something else uh, as the underlayment underneath the shingles is very important that you have at least something, like you said, the first line of defense, if your shingles ever do blow off or if there's ever damage so that water doesn't penetrate your home. Yeah, great. Well, this is a, a, an interesting one here, you know, uh, from uh, Will Welsh with BNK Roofing Solutions in uh, Louisiana. Uh, how do you deal with the question of are you local when you're working in other towns other than where your, your business uh, central office is located? Well, I think that that says, okay, uh, are you local? Well, um, if you choose to work outside of the area that you normally are in, there's got to be a reason for it. Maybe the homeowners really want you to do the roof or you are willing to go far enough to expand your company and your clientele. Yeah, and obviously there has to be some compensation if you're working not locally, you know, whether that's mileage, whether uh, you work that out with the homeowner, but... We got, we got people way up north that want us to go up there, my company to come in. It's got to be you, it's got to be your electricians, it's got to be your plumbers got to be a roofers and homeowners if they're willing to pay that extra to get from a up to z because it's no longer b then it's worth doing right yeah um one of one question came in from alicia scott from roots to roofs in littleton colorado she she wanted to have an inside look into your production and i know you guys have been taping a lot her question is what questions do you ask customers to actually qualify them to work with you uh on the show i take it they're talking about on the show yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's not so much that the questions we ask them uh, my people know that we want true good people we don't want to help people that aren't aren't really wonderful families we because if we, if we have that opportunity to help a difference and educate you the viewers we're excited about that it's more or less what was the problem why are we here uh where did it go wrong in the past where did it go wrong and but we know by looking at them and inspecting them just in that way asking okay maybe we do ask questions how long did uh, you experience this? How much did you pay? Do you have a contract? Can we see the contract? So there are some questions, you're correct about this, but it's more of a gut feeling than anything 
are they good people? They'll take a million pictures. They'll send the pictures to me. I'll look at it. I hear the story and I'll say, I need to see more pictures. Go back and take pictures of this, this, and this. And my last question to my people, are they good people? Yeah, and it, it's like uh, when you're, when you're quoting a job. If you get a bad feeling about someone, you don't necessarily want to work with that homeowner. So we do the same thing. It's like the dating game, like my dad said. You know, you want to make sure you're compatible. You want to make sure you're not going to get ripped off. So it's important to ask the right questions. Trust your instincts. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, a que an interesting question, uh, you know, from Alexis Mathis. And she said, uh, basically, hey, you know, uh, how do you recommend combating previous issues uh, that you might have had in the marketplace, you know, with your brand. And, and Atlas has had issues in the past where we've dealt with them really well, but somebody left a bad review out there, for example. So how do you how do you deal with that as a business or a brand and dealing with somebody putting negative content out there, whether in maybe you've dealt with it in a really good way, but it's still out there and new potential customers are seeing that thing that lives forever out online. How do you battle that? Well, you can't make everyone happy. I, I mean, we've done our best. And what it comes down to is there's always going to be someone that will complain. Uh, and it just, they won't give up. They won't go away. But as long as it's a very low percentage, the most people get it. And I'm talking to homeowners that they were just impossible people. Because if you've got 98% five stars and 2% one star, something's wrong with possibly the two percent yeah it's, it's a very right. good point. can't please everyone but at the same point like, like my dad said earlier in uh, like turbo windows that one of the the contractors we use for our windows it's about writing your wrongs not everyone makes mistakes you're allowed to make mistakes it's what you do to write that wrong that counts and most right. people do that and see that okay they're credible they care they want to do what's right they want to please the homeowner they want to do a good job you made a mistake, it, it happens. We've also gone to the extent of giving that homeowner back their money. We've done the job, here's your money back, please don't call us again. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I think a lot of it's just addressing the issue head on and doing what you're supposed to do. And you know, you've uh, outlined a couple of really important things you could do, but I think it's also letting everybody know, here's how we handled this and let, let those pr prospects make their own mind up. Uh, mm -hmm. Tiara? Yeah, I, that, I think that's really important. One of the other things that um, one of our listeners, Felipe Castro from Pride Roofing in Hammond, Louisiana, asked was, you know, you guys seem to have a lot of fun out there. How do you qualify true happiness? It's, I, you know, when I get to sleep at night, why do I get to sleep at night is because we do believe in what we do. We do care about the clients. If we screw up, we fix it. And just because of that scenario or that theory, I sleep at night. So we want to have fun at work because we got to work together all the time. Yeah. If we don't have fun, then we're not, we shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, right. like, if you're not having fun, what's the point? So, I mean, you got to be happy. You got to be, you got to enjoy what you do. Be passionate about what you do. Um, that to me is, is brings happiness because you spend most of your life working, working and sleeping. So you got to enjoy those right. two. Make sure <laughs> at least one of those. And you can have fun with the homeowner too. That's, we've experienced this. They enjoy the fun that we have with them too. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, that, uh, we, I think we got about time for two more questions. So I got one here from Paul and Paul, I think it's along those lines, Mike, of having fun with homeowners. And, uh, but he says, how can contractors impress upon the customer that our time together is valuable and to give us the time? I think this is something a lot of roofing contractors deal with is that a lot of homeowners don't even want to give them time. It's just, hey, just leave me an estimate, you know, and, and so, you know, and a lot of and with technology evolving today uh, as well. I think that's another thing. People are looking for that instant gratification, but that time with the contractor really understanding the process of what they're going to do. How do you make that important to a, a prospect or a homeowner? From the beginning, um, that relationship will dictate that, type, that kind of fun, that, uh, that wonderfulness that we all should be having together from contractors to homeowners. And that's really from the beginning about being who you are. Again, a low percentage of these people, they don't care. Give me the quote, fix the roof, hand me the bill, I've got things to do. Right. This is a low percentage, and this is being professional knowing 
who those people are. It doesn't mean you change who you are and what you do. You still try to have fun with them. You still try to be, bring them in and make them be part of it. But if you can't, do your job, hand them the bill and move on. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's yeah. important to emphasize why you need that face time with them and why, and say, you know, I, it's really important. I need to explain with you the material breakdown. I need to explain with you the process and and the options in order to give you a proper quote and do the proper job right. That's why it's important to do it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, Stan, my, we, we got a lot of comments in the feed and a lot of really cool questions, but we keep getting it, you guys, that, you know, guys are really, contractors are really excited to be working with the homes team and to be able to have that homes approved stamp of approval um, on our literature and that partnership with 3M and Scotchgard branded products. And so um, Will on comment says, you know, I love, love, love the Atlas team. I'm new to this, but I'm really excited about, you know, having a street free roof for my customers. So thanks to the homes team for that. Oh, we're happy to, great. We're, we're happy to work. Yeah, with well, we can't, to help provide. Yeah, we can't thank you guys enough. Yeah, you guys have been great. Uh, we did the uh, the uh, Roof It Right series, uh, Mike Michael with uh, Sherry. I think that was so much fun. And again, really got a lot of people exposed to how much fun you guys have out on the job site and, uh, you know, getting you guys exposed to a couple of our key contractors. And uh, again, we're going to continue to find new ways to partner with you guys. And then for our contractors out there, uh, find new ways to use the Homes brand and, uh, and Scotchgard as a way to uh, drive new business and show that you're bringing something that has more value than uh, than your competition, I think is a big part of why we're doing all this. So uh, thank you guys for everything you do to make it right and promote yeah. this unbelievable industry. Any closing thoughts for our uh, our webinar viewers today? Well, for me, thanks for being part of it. It shows the professionalism uh, of the people that work with you. So all the contractors that are here today, you're here for a reason. I know you could be on a roof making money, but you're doing something that is important. How, how can little things help make a difference in your company? And I gotta tell you, working together, this synergy point I talked about only a moment ago, that's how we make it right together. Yeah, and I think, you know, whether it's in your business with your homeowners, start with why. Why you do what you do. Why you use the products you use. When you start with why, I think the rest will be explained very easily with the homeowners, with your clients, even with your business. Yep. Great. Well, atlasroofing.com slash pro for all of you that uh, would like to get uh, registered uh, for the uh, home sweepstakes, atlasroofing.com slash pro. And I look forward to many uh, other great pieces of content. And uh, a lot of people will be viewing this after the fact, and we'll turn it into some podcast snippets as well. Thank you, guys. Have a fantastic second half of the year. And uh, it's about to get hot, and summer's arrived up in Canada, I imagine. Yeah, it's sure real is. hot. Yeah. <laughs> great. All right, guys. Thanks. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank right. you. Keep making it right. Take care.